Good morning. It's Tuesday, April 11th, 2023. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Fill Her Up, and our scriptures, Colossians chapter 3, where the Apostle Paul writes, Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. The Apostle instructs the believers at Colossae to make certain everything they do is done as a representative of the Lord Jesus. That is a heavy responsibility. As a pastor just out of seminary in 1983, my first day on the job, I sat in the office, which was a room attached to the back of the parsonage, and all of my books were on the shelves, which, thanks to Mrs. Preacher, had just been dusted and polished, along with the desk and paneled walls and everything else. Even our cat had received a thorough spraying with lemon pledge before he was allowed in there. My Bible was opened, along with a pencil and a new legal pad. I was ready to begin work on sermon number one. I looked around at the bookshelves, the mimeograph machine, and thought, I'm their pastor and I don't have a clue what to do next. In some ways, I've never escaped that thought because it's always been a surprise from one day to the next what God will lead us into. That day, I felt something akin to what Abraham must have experienced when God called him to pack it all up and follow him to a place he'd never seen. It was an adventure, to say the least, and Abraham had to learn a whole new way of thinking. He was going to be God's representative in a strange land, and that is still happening today. One of the most sacred responsibilities a believer can accept and practice has nothing to do with being a larger-than-life personality so you can lead a church or your family or a few co-workers to follow Christ. Rather, it's allowing the richness of who Christ is to fully and firmly indwell your being. It's about opening up your heart and your will to do what Jesus shows you is your part of the harvest to labor. For instance, I came to that small membership church in the tiny town of McIntosh, Florida, with a clean desk and a new legal pad and no clue. But I was thrilled to be there. And I thought I'd arrived in the place where I'd spend the next 40 years or more preaching and growing that little church into a lighthouse. That was eight churches ago. The ride along the way has been interesting, bumpy at times, and teaching me all along the way what was really important, letting Christ dwell in me, no matter what the events of the day brought. In times of plenty, we learned how to share. In times of scarcity, we trusted God to multiply the loaves and fishes. In times of sorrow, joy was waiting just off stage to make an entrance when we'd lift our heads to the author of our faith. And in times of success, the enemy was hiding, sometimes in plain view, to steal God's thunder with his deceiving offers. What I'm trying to say is that God was always going before us in a prevenient grace that made our way possible and profitable. In gains and losses, nothing matters except that others see what God is doing in you as his representative. This is how we are God's witnesses according to Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. With Christ living in us, we are filled with the richness of his life, and we live in thankfulness and praise. For you today, are you ready to live fully for Christ? Look around. Follow him. Let God fill up your life's tank with thankfulness and praise. Yep, fill her up. Eat you on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.